Hey guys, what's up? Garage King here, and today we're going to install a catch can in this Corvette LT4 Camaro ZL1, folks. It's pretty much the same. The only thing is uh, when you mount your can, you're going to have to mount it in a different spot. Anyone that knows these LT4s knows it's a bit of a bear to do because you got to lift the blower in order to get to the vacuum ports. Now, holy cow, look at this. We got almost nowhere to install this can, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fab up a custom bracket. And also, full disclosure, no OEM parts will be hurt in the making of this video. So I do not want to cut into any OEM parts. Uh, how am I going to do that? Well, lots of research, but we're going to get it done. So first off, we need to find the donor can. Okay, so I think I found the perfect can. This is one that was uh, sold by Apex. Uh, they're a good company. I don't even know if they're still around or if they still sell catch cans. I'm not quite sure. So I won't go into too much details describing it, but it's got multiple ports, which is really good. And if you unscrew the bottom, there's actually no O-ring. Uh, the, the mating surfaces are so well machined that it just seals and I've never had an oil leak. And like I said, I use it on multiple builds. So I'm not gonna sell this catch can because you guys can go buy anyone uh, that you want. So let's get under the hood and let's start uh, doing some measuring for our brackets. Back under the hood we are and let's try to position this catch can with the bracket that actually came with it there. Um, let me give you a better view. So if we pan from the top you can see what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to use one of those bolts and I'm going to make a bracket to connect to this bracket. So anyway that's what I'm going to try to do. So we got to go buy some steel now. Okay, so I went up to the local steel store and I got some stock steel. Now this stuff, it's a quarter inch thick. It's one and a quarter inch wide and it's obviously too long for what I need. So I'm not sure exactly where to put the bend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bend in it and then I'll just trim off the front side or the back side and I can just modify it. This way I know I can get my bend in the right place. We're sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. Please check the number or try your call again. This is a recording.
So now we have a soft installation of our cash can, just basically how it's mounted. Now we're gonna wanna have vacuum all the time because you definitely don't wanna have crank pressure. So what we're gonna do is basically what everyone is doing these days. We're just gonna use a vacuum from behind the throttle body here. So we'll get vacuum from there, but there is times that there is no vacuum there if you're uh, wide open throttle, heavy loads. So some people, they drill into the front part here uh, to get vacuum. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use this piece here, make up a piece. So when there's no throttle from, or sorry, no vacuum from right behind the throttle body here, what we'll do is then we'll get vacuum from the front. And then what we're gonna do is we're even gonna have a third line and that's uh, if there's just, pressure in the crank for whatever reason and we just don't have enough vacuum anywhere, then what'll happen is it's just gonna vent it out. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, that'll be our, our fail safe. So that's what we're gonna do. So it's time to lift this blower and let's uh, let's get going. Just before we go going really briefly, let's uh, take a look at the mileage so we can see 441 kilometers. That's equal to 274 miles. So not a lot of mileage on this uh, Corvette. So I'd be curious to see how much oil is there in the blower. Now to get the throttle body boot off, there's only two eight millimeter uh, bolts. You can either use a screwdriver or you can use a socket. I prefer to use a socket just because this way you don't have to worry about scratching anything. And we'll unclip that vacuum hose you can see right there. At the front, here's a shot from the other side. We can just wiggle it out. And then once it pops out, don't forget to undo the connector on the side of the throttle body. Here, give you a little zoom in there. There you go. This part really wasn't that hard. So this, this is the easy part. And if you're wondering why um, we have to lift the blower up, uh, I was able to get my camera and get a really good shot. You can see right in and under there, that's the part we have to remove. That's where uh, our, I guess, diverter, if you want to call it, is going to go into there. So that's what we got to remove. So um, there's no way to get your hands in there without lifting the blower. So that's why we have to lift the blower. Okay, so here's the top of the supercharger. There's 20 bolts and the head bolt size is eight millimeter on all of them. So here's a shot of the lid, the inside, and we can see there's basically no oil, but keep in mind it only has 411 kilometers. So I don't know what that is in the miles, I'll throw it up, but really not much. So that's why uh, I wanted to get this done early because of all the ones I've seen, uh, there's been tons. But you know what? I know there's gonna be a few that say, see, there's absolutely no oil, nothing to worry about. Let's take a look at the underside of the cover. So here's the underside of the cover. I just wanna go right here. And you know what, there is a film of oil starting on the underside of the cover. So it is, it's actually starting. Let's just give, uh, let's back up and give it a wipe and see what we get off. And there you can see there is uh, where I put my fingers. So there is oil and it's, uh, it's starting. Not much, not much, because uh, such low kilometers, so it's perfect time to install our catch can. Anyway, that's the underside of the cover, what it looks like. Next, we're gonna take the serpentine belt off, and on the Z06, there is two serpentine belts. I'm gonna come in there nice and close. You can see there's one behind, I'll draw a little arrow. That is for your AC unit, and the one in front is for the blower. So if I pan over here, right here, this is a 15 mil bolt. We're just gonna twist that or turn that and we're gonna actually be pushing towards a passenger side and that'll loosen the belt up and then we'll be able to pull it off the supercharger. So that's what we have to do. So if we look around, we can see we've taken, uh, this is loose, so everything's loose on, on top. The rest we can pretty much leave on. Now there is these um, little clips here, but I'm not sure how much we have to lift the blower. I think we probably should take those off. So I'm just gonna pop those off with a little tool. 
Now I'm just gonna do uh, the supercharger bolts. There's five uh, on each side. There's one, two, three, four, and there is a fifth one. You can see it's right in there. So what I've done is I've got my quarter drive on a swivel, just like so, so we can actually get into that, uh, get into that quite easily. So it's an easy one to get to. Bolt on the driver's side is actually quite easy, but on the passenger side here, you can see it is really tight. So I'm gonna actually use a wrench to get in here because there's no way I'm gonna be able to get a socket in here. Uh, we have a little bit of play in here, but not a lot. So for this last bolt here, I'm gonna just have to wrench it out by hand. So as you can see here, I'm just using my wrench here. This one was actually quite the, the bugger to get out. It was uh, really, really tight, but it just takes some time, but you can get it out. And you don't actually have to remove the bolt. As long as it's loose, that's all you need. You can see there with my finger, I'm just pushing it up. I'll get you a better angle here. And there you go, we can see it's loose. That's all you need to do, just to make sure you can lift the blower. If we look now, we can see I can actually move the supercharger. It is loose. So I'm just gonna find something that I can put underneath it to, to hold it up. Okay, so I was able to lift it up. You can see there how much it's actually lifted up. There's, uh, there's the aligning pins. So everything, uh, everything looks good under there. Nothing's, nothing's fallen and I can see the, actually on the back of the upper part of the, there's the gaskets right there. You can see they're actually these rubber things that are on there. So those won't fall down. So those are fine. And then what I've done is I've used some tape here, mass, well actually I tried the electrical tape first and it wasn't thick enough. So then I'm using this piece of tape there. And then you can see that's what we have to take out. That's the, the old PCV if you would, or not PCV, I guess, well, I guess it is kind of, yeah. And there, I'll throw an arrow up there. That's where it goes up underneath into the supercharge port. So that's what it is. And I noticed there's this black stuff under here. Uh, there we go. All that black stuff under there. And I think that's a type of insulation or something maybe to make it be quiet. So it'd be good if we could get that out, but there's no way to get that out without uh, taking the supercharger right out. So that's a 14 mil there, and I have, uh, I have a long Allen key, so I'm gonna use it for that, to get that out. So let's put this around here to protect our idler. And this would be the way to take it out because it's actually just in there hand tight. As you can see, I didn't even have to put a, a tool on this to turn it or anything like that. I brought a wrench out. I thought I was gonna have to wrench it out, but no, didn't have to wrench it out. Let's get you a better view. And there we go. That's a piece, so let's take it to the bench. So here's our PCV valve. We're gonna save it, and you can actually, it's got a one-way valve in it. You can see uh, right there. There we go, I'm moving it, and it'll slide back. So there's the one-way valve. Ordered a new one, or not a new one, but here's uh, a nice fully plating. Let's take off these O-rings, and we're gonna put these O-rings on. So we're just gonna change them over. There we go, and it's in. And then now we can just turn it. So we're just gonna have to start it. And I should say for these parts, uh, I paid for them full price with my own money. So my videos are always unbiased. So whatever I use, I just, I think is the most appropriate for my build. And there, it looks like it's uh, looks like it's in. So let's go get our other piece. Now we're just gonna put on our hose, and if you see there, I do have uh, a bit of a clamp there. 
I'm gonna just try to squeeze that on uh, at the very end. There you can see there's a, the hose clamp perfectly installed. Let's zoom in. And you can see there's, whoops, there's our hose clamp. We're in good shape. Now, time to lower the blower down and we're gonna root this hose. I'll show you where. There's our hose right here and we want it behind our piece of tape. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, there's a spot down in there. You can see there's where it goes. So as we move the tape out, we're just gonna slide our hose up and then it'll be poking up here. We are down. So yes, so I can see the supercharger is down. I'll give you a little view now. So the supercharger is down. Let's pan in here and you can see exactly what happened. So there it is, really tight. So this was the only way to get it done. I'm actually gonna see if I can move that clamp down there with a little tiny screwdriver, just so it's not touching there. I'll do that in a minute. And you can see we're loose here. So there it goes right through there. So it actually does fit fit through there, not too bad. So that's the way it's, uh, that's the way it's gotta go. What I did there too is I just put a little bit of wiring loom. You can see it's just there. And it's just to, I guess, try to protect it. I don't know if it's necessary or not, and it may even come off or something like that, or if it burns or whatever, we'll see. But it's rated um, high temperature for automobiles. So this way it'll let, if anything, it'll just protect the hose from any type of rubbing or stuff like that. So now what we gotta do is just grab these things. We'll put them back together. You can see that just goes there. That's just our little vacuum. We're gonna put the belt on, but before we do that, we're just gonna torque down the supercharger. So I got my 10 mil socket. And just gonna make sure I can tighten them all by hand. Definitely don't wanna cross thread anything. Now I can tell that these had uh, some type of Loctite or something on them before because they were stiff sort of coming the whole way out and I can feel as they go in, they're still a little stiff. I, they're threaded, but they're going in and then I can feel where they get a little bit tighter. So the Loctite's still there, it's a new vehicle. So I don't have to worry about applying more Loctite. But I just wanna make sure that I can Thread them all by hand first before I do anything else. Like I said, cross threading something into your uh, intake manifold here would not be fun at all. Is a torque sequence so I'm just barely putting any pressure just just till the bottom basically I'm not even torquing them and the, I'll throw up the torque sequence for you guys so you can see I don't wanna, I can't actually put the printout up because if I put the printout up my video might be flagged or something for copyright or something like that so I'll actually do a little drawing on a whiteboard and you guys will just have to uh, deal with my romp room drawing now torque spec is 89 inch pounds, which really isn't a lot when you convert it to uh, foot pounds, you would divide by 12. So I don't even know off the top of my head. I know I have my torque wrench here set to 89 inch pounds, but I'll throw up the measurement in foot pounds. It's really not much. So that's just to give you guys an idea of the, the actual torque of the supercharger. It really doesn't have to be that tight. And you can see I'm just using a quarter drive right here. Now when you do the torque sequence, you're supposed to do it twice to make sure that they're all evenly tightened down.
to the catch can routing. So we have to get a uh, vacuum from here. I was actually able to source out a special part and I will explain, it took me some time to do this. So all we have to do is we're gonna undo our throttle body. Okay, get this, wait for it. No one has done this yet. I was able to find this. Problem is, wrong size connection on the bottom. We're gonna worry about that in a minute. So we're gonna stick this on, just like so. Now, what we can do is put our factory connection back on. There we go, whoops. There we go. And it is on. So that is awesome. We do not have to cut into our factory wires or leads. You can see lots of room there. It's good there. I'm gonna put a little bit of loom. Let me get that wire out of the way. I'm gonna put a little bit of loom there just in case it's rubbing. So at the end, I'll put a little bit of loom on there. But other than that, now I don't have to cut into the factory wires. One problem is it is a 5 8 connection. I don't even know what the millimeters is exactly, but it's big. So this will go in here, just like so. It's, it's tough to even get in. There we go. One hand, then it'll snap in, and I gotta have a way to transition from this big lead all the way to there. So we're gonna work on that right now. All right, so for right here, I found an elbow, five eighths on one side, half inch on the other side. So it's gonna go like this, that'll be perfect, and then we're gonna run hard line tubing coming out of it, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a gate special clamp. All right, so I have everything in position. I've tried it out, so I'm just gonna heat shrink this one on and I'm gonna heat shrink this one on as well because I wanna make sure that this doesn't turn. Let's just take a quick pause just to show you there is a one-way valve attached and we do have a restrictor in there uh, because we wanna have our one-way valve because we don't wanna obviously have reverse airflow and we need our restrictor because if we don't have it, we might actually have uh, too much flow in the system. All right, so we have our, I guess, thing we made if you wanna call it that. So we're just gonna install it now. So it's gonna go through here, just like so. This part is gonna to attach to the catch can at the bottom. There we go, just like so. And then we can tighten this up. And then actually we'll have to tighten this up. So this is easy enough to undo. We can just tighten these up. What I wanted to do is I don't like tightening them right up just until I get my um, line if you want it call it that just till I get my line position and then I can just tighten up these so that's not a big deal and now this here can just go in here so we're just gonna go right in let's see if I can get it in here and there we go so that's it so this line is good and that's our suction line so we have our one-way valve there which is perfect and then we got our restrictor there now I may move the restrictor around we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, this is what I want to do first. This way I keep everything, uh, catch can and everything coming out uh, low pressure, not high, uh, or sorry, low vacuum, not high vacuum. So I think it might function better. I don't know exactly. So now we're going to do our uh, emergency blow off valve. So let's do that. And for our emergency valve, what we're going to do is we just got an AN6 fitting. It's just a standard push lock fitting. And I have a one way valve and we're just going to join those with a piece of rubber. We don't even need clamps because there should be no pressure coming out. This is just if the catch can has a little bit of excess pressure it can just vent out through this way. And we'll even monitor it, see if it's even necessary. But... And here you can see I'm making the second uh, suction line and this one's gonna be connected near to the air filter. What the heck did I do there? Well, this is for this piece that goes right in here. So let me get you some good light here. There we go. So we unpopped this piece from the factory here. This is just under the air filter. There you can see, uh, um, not the air filter, I don't know, whatever this air dam thing is that goes there. So we unpop this like so. Now we're gonna install this thing that I made. This way we don't have to cut any factory lines. So we're gonna install it. There we go, just like that. Now the shorter piece here we're gonna tuck in under here, it's a flex joint. So it's no problem, we're just gonna tuck it in. It's really hard to do with one hand. And it'll clip onto the factory line here. There we go, just like that. So our factory line's nice and tucked in. Now we have the rest of this part, is it's just going to plug on to the catch can right here. Made some adjustments. So here we go, I actually put this facing back. So this is pretty much in, 
it's just gonna screw in like that. But before, I wanna show you there's nothing touching. I had to do, make a little few adjustments. Let's just yank this out really quick. You can see it comes out. There we go, there's the dirty side going in. So you can see it going in on top. Suction out through the side right there, up and just behind our throttle body plate, just like that, did not cut into any factory wires. Also on this side, constant suction. We tied right into there, that's the vacuum there, so there'll be a high uh, flow. Uh, usually when there's no vacuum there, there should be some there. Uh, we connected the factory wires back there, there you can see it, or uh, factory hose I should say. And just as a safety measure, right there, you can see it goes to nothing, that's a one-way valve. So what happens is if this thing does build pressure, or if the orifice for some reason, maybe this orifice is too small, then what'll happen is it'll build a pressure, it'll just release it into the engine bay. I actually did order a breather, I'm gonna put a breather on the end, I just haven't gotten it yet. And then when I looked online, uh, for the amount that uh, can come through a one, uh, one eighth inch orifice, I found that 1.2 cubic feet could come through at uh, two inches uh, a vacuum and up to four at 24 inches. So anywhere between 1.2 and four cubic feet is uh, per minute is what this sucker is gonna flow. So let's talk about replacement of the restrictor a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how it works on the actual engine, just for those that uh, maybe need a better visual. Here, we're gonna look at a visual. So uh, the PVC restriction here, it's a fixed orifice, as we've mentioned before, don't wanna beat that uh, dead horse up. So one eighth inch orifice. So we know we're gonna get between one and four standard cubic feet per minute flow, depending on our vacuum, okay? So now we've restricted this. If we put the restrictor underneath the blower, we've restricted this to one to four standard cubic feet per minute. Never gonna get more than that, okay? Because that's just the laws of physics. That's, that, that's what it is. So um, we're basically relying on the throttle body and uh, the air velocity here uh, to provide us with that vacuum. Now there is cases where I believe this engine may need more than four cubic feet per minute. It just, it just may need it, but only briefly, like maybe at wide open throttle, um, you know, bursts, stuff like that. So by me placing the restrictor right here, now what I've done is there is no restriction on this hose. It can, it can flow as much as a three eighths uh, ID hose will let it flow, which is way more than the factory, uh, ever needed, so that's why we have our restrictor here. And most of the time, this one's not even working, so we can just ignore it. But at the odd time where we're at wide open throttle and we have almost no vacuum, we're not gonna pull enough from here. We're hoping that we can pull enough from here. Now, there's not gonna be a lot of vacuum here, but there is some. Now, here's the thing. If we put the restrictor under the blower, we've, out, we've restricted this as well because we've restricted the main line. But because we have not restricted the main line, okay, we have no vacuum there, the vacuum there will take over at wide open throttle. Now it runs unrestricted, so it can just, it can pull. So for those brief moments, when you're at wide open throttle and you are producing a lot of blow-by, I think you need uh, to have uh, a lot more evacuation in your oil separator. So that's one of the benefits, I think, of putting the restrictor there. I don't know, comment, it's, I mean, I don't know, this is just uh, what I'm doing. The other thing is once I put my breather on here, uh, it's got a white mesh, I can see or I'll be able to see if there's any oil on it. Now, if there's any oil on the white mesh, um, then what I know is the can is under pressure and it's not doing its job. So we're not even getting enough evacuation. So at that point, I can drill out the restrictor just a little bit and I can do some tests until I, I should not get anything on this. There should be no evacuation from the can then I know, um, then I know it's working 100%. So that's it for the video. Give me a thumbs up. This video took a long time to do. I put a lot of effort into it. Um, hopefully uh, you got something out of it. I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. It'd mean a lot to me. As you can see, no pressure on the crankcase right now, so that's good. Uh, we'll see how it is once we uh, drive it around and once the weather gets a little nicer because it's still uh, winter time. But uh, as soon as it gets nice, we'll drive it around and we'll check out and see what's happening.